Hi, it's Wasabi. Welcome back to the channel. We've got a battle on the Al Haluf map. We have Intizando from 1AR. He's in the Cobra, which is the um, tier 9 um, commitment tank. It's a reward tank that you can get with uh, Battle Pass tokens. It takes 24 tokens, so it's a fairly expensive tank to get. Uh, so you have to accumulate the tokens over the year to get that number of tokens. Season, I think you get 12 tokens uh, if you complete everything. Um, so, yeah, it takes at least a minimum of two seasons to get the um, tokens. Anyway, um, he's in platoon with Pyro and his second account, uh, which is in 2AR to help other players. He's in Content 1B and they're heading to the battleground. So, Cobra is a medium tank. to be on tier, in fact this is a tier 9, tier 10 battle. Anyway, four shot auto loader, um, very high alpha damage, around 850, so the clip potential is pretty good, but the reload's pretty long, so Hornady, the Hesh, and Pen at 210, bring around 360 damage, but you get 268 Pen, so got a bit of a trade off there. Anyway, heading to this corner here. Starting in the game, the enemy's got a 2-1-2-A Really long reload, but um, can't be a dangerous gun, but it's a tier 9 and In fact, they've got a T-92 HMC, and that's a lot more dangerous as well it used to be one of the most dangerous um, TDs uh, SPGs, I should say, in the game Alright, they've already lost their Charger 2 4 a bit unfortunate comes a Super Conqueror. Now, the Hesh round, you may do some damage um, if it doesn't penetrate, but not a whole lot, but at least you get something out of it. Uh, Pyro took it there from the Super Conqueror, and they're both just getting arty safe for the moment. Pyro's got that magnificent 3D. And uh, Camo on his uh, Concept 1B, you've seen that before, I'm pretty sure. Uh, looks like lava at the front is splashed over the front of the tank. And it sort of blows a bit between the cracks as well, so it's um, pretty impressive. But anyway, let's not get distracted by that. One of the position uh, benefits of this position, of course, is you catch the tanks crossing. But everyone knows that, so they're holding back there. Um, this team's got an AMX 5120 holding the corner, which is a bit dangerous. It's not a very well-armoured tank, even though it's got a, a um, uh, you know, multi-loader. Uh, something wrong with this replay, the turret. No, it's coming back. It takes a hit on the tracks there. Now, I'm just wondering why the turret uh, is not moving properly. Uh, maybe he's locked on to the Super Conqueror. That could be it. Uh, the Super Conqueror stayed visible, that's potentially what it is. So I have to keep an eye on that one. It's a bit distracting, but uh, anyway, um, a bit static here at the moment. No one wants to really poke out, take too much damage. Waiting for tanks to push out and take it on them. Zano has decided to come around the back here and look for some other targets. Manticore's down there. Oh, there we go. It's a match at 25 TAP, the T9 one. And can you put a blind shot in there? Doesn't want to. Manticore goes away. Oh, they lose the Manticore. That's a bit unfortunate, but um, lost their only light tank. spotting the batch at 25 AP. So I think it's going to be a bit dangerous to push out now that enemy Medicore is not that far away and in fact they already get spotted so time to pull back. Oh, well, there's the Medicore and can he get a hit to it? Oh yes it does. Lastly gets a shot in. Second shot doesn't catch him. Third shot misses his pretty carefully and the fourth shot almost fires to clear his Clip and uh, start reloading. 
So we're in a fairly long reload cycle now, so let's try about 30 something seconds. Or 41 seconds, there you go, let's just put the reload timer into chat. So, if you think, let's say it rolls 500, um, well it's average 450, but let's say it's 500, you get um, 2,000 hit points. Now, while I've been busy facing the other way, and our pyro is also firing at that mate core, trying to reduce him, enemy is pushed right into the ditch here. Now that's interesting because you can get side shots on him, but it's just waiting to reload. And here we go. I've got 777, pyro comes up here. Pretty aggressive player, so he knows when he's going to pin. And Peter Zano just to the side, he doesn't want to get in the way of the 777 gun. There's an E3 down there as well. We can fire down the roof. Okay, this is perfect. It goes right through the roof there, two shots. And then here you go, the Hesh round not penetrating but getting 18 hit points, so acting like an HG round. And same thing with the 60 TP, we're getting 154. So, got about 800 hit points out of that clip. And now I think the enemy's in a little bit of trouble. They're able to fire down on them, not necessarily protecting themselves being in there. Waiting for his clip to load again. Here comes the 60 TP. So the other thing about this particular spot, of course, is you can back right up and go down the hill, and it makes it hard for them to get their gun depression working. But um, 60 TP is fired now, so you can oh, no, you can go after the uh, triple seven. Bang! One more shot. Oh, and he leaves him 36, but then gets the kill. So one more shot, and uh, gets another kill with the 60 TP. So a uh, pretty tense right there, but managed to get two kills in pretty close succession. And he three saying, get out of the way. Oh, here we go. Object 263. And luckily, the object 263 firing at the um, E3 and takes the E3 out, which is a bit unfortunate, but Pyro's there to inflict some damage on the 263 and he should get a kill here, I would think. Just circling in there, and yes, <laughs> gets that sneaky kill there. So, team's a bit of a hole in terms of um, guns in the game. There are two tanks down, but they're pretty even Stevens on hit points. And Dizano has got all of this, which is pretty handy. Lit there, but I oh, what now? Something perhaps when he's crossing, maybe the medical. No, he's lit again. Interesting. Now uh, the batch at 25 TAP, maybe, but uh, he's now behind cover, so maybe that's what. Yeah, there we go. T10, he's just asking for trouble. This is for that shot. Uh, but uh, Pyro takes him out. Finally takes a hit, a big one, from the E3. It's a different E3, of course. And the Artie's starting to play a bit of havoc, but uh, mainly from stunning. But uh, can he get something on this E3? Well, he doesn't want to get in front of the gun now. He's very likely to have reloaded by the time Interzano gets there, so he beats a hasty retreat. Make sure it's not being followed. And it will take a little while for that E3 to get back up the um, hill. So he and Pyro are uh, heading back. There's no point. They need to sort of start defending here. They're still down a little bit. There's an E4 down there. And the E4's a bit vulnerable to be honest. Um, they're not as good as the E3 in terms of armour. Well, they do have a semi-rotating turret that it goes from side to side, 180 degrees, but um, it's not as flexible as it sounds. Oh, and he's got a chance to get rid of this 25 TAP. Bad chat. No, he's run away behind the rock, so that's okay. That's more that there's uh, a few TDs at the back. Oh no, there he goes. Might be able to get shot on. Bang! And he gets the kill. Now that lights up in Pisano, but he was already backing off, so not going to get in the way of the Waffle Trago gun that is was on the other side of the um, hill there. So it goes dark, and 
Right, uh, he'll be able to cross. Oh no, he's lit again. What is lighting him up? Guaranteed to be the Manticore. But where is the Manticore? That's the question. Somewhere behind him. That's probably the case. So he turns around. Can he get something out? Oh, yeah, and he's lit. So there's a bush up there somewhere that the Manticore's in. Not too far away, obviously. But, uh, just needs to blind fire that bush in front. I don't think that's what he's going to do. Yep. Goes in 3D mode. No, he's not going to fire at that bush, so maybe it's just that corner there. Now, the question is, he doesn't know if it's still lit. That's one of the problems, so he's got to back right off. And go dark. And then pop out and... Oh, now behind him. Panzer just asking for trouble, however he's run away. Oh, here we go. There's the Manticore sitting in a bush. <laughs> Bang, and he gets him. It does take a hit, but um, that's okay. My Manticore just uh, playing it a bit too cute there. Oh, in fact, that's his name. I think this little Panzer's not run away completely. He's come back, so now he's going to take a hit for sure. One shot in, and another shot, and gets the kill. So, nicely done. This object went 40 down in the gully there, but uh, into Zando on the reload. So, still pretty close, although they've got... Oh, the 140's been taken up by Puck. Good bit of work. And the Waffen Traeger's moved up, so there's a chance for into Zando to get a bit more damage here. He's on nearly 3.5k. As long as you can dodge the um, gun on the Waffen Traeger, it'll be pretty good. It's the, uh, he's definitely one shotable to the Waffen Traeger, so as he crawls up the hill here, it's not him being slow, <laughs> it's, it's the slowest medium tank in the game, I reckon. Uh, the Waffen Traeger is pointing in another direction, so he's going to get side shots in one, two, and third one will get the kill, bang, before he gets the shot back in the other direction. And that leaves now just the arty, so. After all that intense activity, trying to stay alive, they are finally back in control of the game, and now it's just a matter of finding the arty and getting rid of them. So, that kill gave Intizano the top gun, that was his sixth kill. Oh, and the enemy T92 has done a cliff dive, I would say. It's crashed, so that's a bit sad. And now it's just the 212A. And two minutes to go. It's most likely up in that top corner there, sort of A0 position. And it's only trying to track as straight a line as possible. <laughs> Most of the time. They're not going to run out of time, I'm sure they'll find him. Pyro's already moving up there. But, uh, this Cobra is definitely not a speed machine. Alright, there's the 212A. Now he gets reduced in hit points. I would say Pyro is leaving this kill for Intizano here. Pyro would have finished him. Maybe is going to line him up with his last shot. Bang, gets the kill. So, interesting game there at the end, but um, pulled it off in the end. Well, didn't get the high caliber award, but he did 4.6k uh, of damage. Seven kills gave him the top gun, and together with uh, Pyro in the platoon, he's got the uh, brothers in arms. And it uh, looks like um, okay, Oscan's medal for destroying at least three tanks that at least a tier above you. And that's earned him the Ace Tanker badge. So let's have a look at the team score. All right, so he's finished on top there in damage, 4.6k, and Pyro doing 4.3. So always good bragging rights to <laughs> come out in front of Pyro. And Pyro getting 1309 base as well, but uh, Tizano getting 
1,553 base, which is a nice level there. And um, the Leopard one doing 4.1k as well. So those three tanks basically looking after the whole... Um, sorry, that's my pad, you're going off. Um, yeah, those three tanks really carrying the game for the team. The enemy Manticore coming out on top, um, getting a lot of spotting damage, we assume. Um, the E3 doing... Well, one of the A3s doing 3.6k and Super Conk doing 2.5 being the best players in their team in terms of damage. But uh, this is Intizano's game, so this was what it cost him. Well, he fired 24 shots in the end, a few wasted shots there, particularly at the end there. I'm not quite sure why he fired three shots to get the last kill with his uh, last shell in the clip, but it wasn't the last shot he had loaded, so it wasn't going to get him a fade in his medal. Um, but uh, 17 hits out of 24 and just for 12 penetrations but you can see six splash damage so six of those 17 so that's really um, 18 shots in total getting damage which is interesting so one shot must have just missed but um, also cause of damage which is yeah really quite strange um, so okay the damage total well, let's have a look at the cost here so this is a reward tank so as I said start it's a um, premium tank then corrected myself and that's basically the situation that it's a reward tank that you can get with bonds uh, tokens I'm really all over the shop at the moment apologies for that um, but the only real benefit you get of course is being able to move crews in and out and um, it's not a great credit earner but um, it does come with some benefits I think you get a, a infinite supply of um, large repair kits like most of their t9 uh, Battle Pass token re reward tanks, but um, will save you a little bit of money, but not a whole lot. Well, 20k per battle, that's uh, not to be sneezed at. So 105k on ammunition, uh, 23k on consumables, and net loss of 65k is how that worked out for him. In any case, um, great effort in the Cobra. It's not an easy tank to play, and you can see with the long reloads, you've got to be in a safe place to get your reloads in, and he's managed to take advantage of that. Has come out top damage, but not enough to get the high caliber reward, but great battle nonetheless. Anyway, thanks Intizano for the content. I hope everyone watching it gets some enjoyment out of this or some learning, in which case can you give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing that. We'll have more great content to follow. Thanks very much for watching.